I just had a whole conversation and didn't even hit the record button. Tuesday is December. Ginny Murphy is a total girl. Let's try that again. Ginny, oh my gosh. Ginny Murphy is a total guy's, oh my gosh, now the train's going by. <laughs> it's not my day. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to Rex Manning Day, which is basically all the books that are coming out in October, which is Midnight is the Darkest Hour is finally almost here. So this book, this book, this month starts with a book that I'm absolutely obsessed with, which I haven't read yet. And this book ends with a book that I'm absolutely obsessed with, which I haven't read yet. So let's get going. There's actually a book that comes out in October 1st, but still anyway, Midnight is the Darkest Hour is coming out this month but there's a whole bunch of other stuff coming too. So let's talk about it. Okay, first up on October 1st, which is the day that you guys would be seeing this if you're watching it the day that it goes up, we have These Still Black Waters by Christina McDonald. So if you are an Amazon First Reads reader, <laughs> then you would have been able to get your hands on this in September, which is what I have done. And then I'm gonna read it. So she wrote The Night Olivia Fell, which is a book that I absolutely loved. I read it years ago. She's written some more books since then. So in this book, which is being marked as the first in a series of Detective Jess Lambert. So in this one, we have two women struggling towards a dark truth. Yes, and a killer avenging the sins of the past. Yes, things that I love in a book. So it says, after a violent home invasion, Nev McGuire returns with her daughter to, to Black Lake her childhood summer home, hoping for a fresh start. Now we all know that there's no way she's getting a fresh start because this is a thriller. So it says, when the body of a woman is found floating among the reeds in the lake behind her house, she fears she's made a horrible mistake. Um, Nev, I think you, you would be right in assessing that. So Nev's got a whole bunch of secrets and Detective Jess Lambert can tell. So Jess has a whole bunch of stuff in her own closet. I am trying not to read too much about it, but it says that they are gonna be forced to confront a horrible truth because the one thing is clear, the darkness of the past is waiting and the secrets of Black Lake are only just beginning to surface. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. This is a stunning cover. Am I in a position where you guys can see the cover? Let me shimmy. I totally loved The Night Olivia Fell. I thought it was so well written. It was very character driven. I'm a big fan, so I'm very excited for this one. Very, very excited for this one. Okay, here we go, friends. Tuesday, October 3rd, Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead is officially out in the world. If you guys have been on my Ashley Winstead journey with me, you know I tried everything to get my hands on an arc of this book and I failed miserably at getting my hands on an arc of this book. So when this baby shows up on my doorstep, I'm gonna be tearing into it and I'm gonna be on like a do not disturb, do disturb, do not disturb until I finish it. So I am not gonna read the description of this book because I have not read it. I wanna go in as blind as humanly possible. I have not read anybody's reviews. I will just, if people are posting it, I'm just hearting it, but I'm not reading anything about it. I wanna know nothing. So the only thing I know is something that Ashley Winstead said on a podcast last year when she was talking about it, which is that this book is every summer after with serial killers. So again, if you guys have been here for a while, you know, I was like, ooh, what is this every summer after some murdery stuff, which is the Carly Fortune book about <laughs> childhood romance that kind of went sideways and then they're reunited as adults. So read and loved that book. I'm very curious how this is gonna partner with serial killers and I will let you guys know everything about how I feel about this book after I read it. So just, just know I'm gonna be occupied come October 3rd. And so help me if that package does not arrive on time, I am not gonna be a person that you're gonna to wanna to deal with. <laughs> so that's Midnight is the Darkest Hour. Okay, up next. So the next one is a sequel to a book that I started last year and then I soft DNF'd it. Did I start it last year or two years ago? I think it was last year. I soft DNF'd it because I just couldn't get into it. I went through a period where I think I soft DNF'd at least three, if not four books. I was really in a bit of a rut. So the book is Becoming the Boogeyman by Richard Chismar. And the first book is Chasing the Boogeyman. So this is a true crime kind of meta book. So Chasing the Boogeyman is 
a book, I want to say it's in the 80s. I could get up and pick it up or I could just click on the, the link on my computer here and tell you. I want to say it's set in the 80s. Yeah, summer of 1988. So Richard Chismar, the author, is his 1988 self returning to his hometown as he did in 1988 after he graduated college. His girlfriend who became his wife was doing a five-year study, so she had one more year at school. And he fictionalizes what happened that summer and that he puts a serial killer into his hometown. And he and his friends get somehow embroiled in the true crime of it all. So it self inserts through things that he was actually doing in 1988 in his actual life with this whole blended fact and fiction kind of a thing going on. And I'd heard great things about it. I want to say I got like 60 or 70 pages in. I didn't not like the book. I just was not, nothing was holding my attention. So I pivoted to a lot of different books, but anyway, there's a sequel, which is coming out, which I a thousand percent have my eye on. So obviously my intention plan, I will go back and read the first book and then take a look at the second book. But if anyone has read book number one, wanted to let you know that. I don't know too much about him. I know he has co-written some books with Stephen King. He is obviously a horror writer, but I love the self-insert. Anthony Horowitz did that in his Hawthorne Horowitz series, and I love it. So I love that fictionalization of factual events. Although in the case of this book, the true crime in the book is the fake part and like the Richard Chismar is the true part. So I thought it was a very interesting twist on that. So stay tuned. And then on the 17th, I feel like uh, October is a little bit of a lean month, but it's also making me feel like I'm missing some stuff. But on the 17th, we have The Exchange by John Grisham, which is the sequel to The Firm. So I reread The Firm in September, which you guys would not have seen a review of yet unless you follow me on Instagram. And I will be doing my like September wrap up, but obviously it hasn't come out yet. But I read The Firm way back in the day, and I loved it. So that was the first Grisham book I read that definitely was a game changer for me in terms of, I didn't know what a legal thriller was. It opened an entire gate that went on for years and years and years of legal thrillers. And I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed the reread. I wound up doing the audiobook, and there were, I remembered all of the core elements of the story, but there were elements of it that I had forgotten. And I definitely had a little bit of a mix in my brain of the movie versus the book, which happens, but it was so well done. And I just was like so nostalgically happy about it. And I just thought it was a great book. I thought the pacing was great. I thought the mystery was great. I thought like the cleverness of how everything is executed. If you haven't read the book, I don't want to ruin anything for you. But all that to say, we pick up with Mitch McDear, who is our attorney in the firm. He is basically the attorney, graduated from Harvard, top of his class, had his choice of law firms, and winds up getting wooed by this small law firm in Memphis. And they make him an offer he can't refuse, and they make him an offer that seems too good to be true. And Mitch, Mitch, Mitch realizes why he got sort of this sweet deal of an offer. So in book number two, we're going to pick up with him. So I honestly don't know how far in the future this book is set. Oh, 15 years later, if I actually read the description, I would know that. So 15 years later. So we'll see. So the firm came out, I want to say in like 1990. Watch me make up all the stories here. I'm literally sitting with a computer on my lap. How about I just, I just look it up. The firm originally came out in 1991. So 2006 is when book two takes place. Fast math, look at me go, look at me go. So I've already pre-ordered that and I'm excited to get it and I'm excited to read it and the cover is also stunning. And then the next book I have is also a pre-order. This is the new Geneva Rose book and this is It's a Date again. So I have read all of her books that are out to date and I'm excited for this one. So this one is a bit of a rom-com. So to me, Geneva Rose is in our Ashley Winstead, Jesse Q. Sutanto camp of can pivot genres, can pivot books, can write completely different books, but like you still know you're in one of their books and does it very seamlessly. And I have enjoyed each of Geneva Rose's books for different reasons and in different ways but I'm very excited for this. So I don't know if you guys follow her on Instagram, but she is such a riot. She has such a deadpan sense of humor. Her and her husband are just, to me, like relationship goals. 
So I'm very interested to see if her humor bleeds into this. So in this one, it's one love struck woman, three handsome boyfriends and strangers and a unique dating adventure. So the blurb says a guy told me he loved me tonight. Peyton Sanders hopes it's not too late to say it back. Done with dead end relationships and swiping right, she knows who her heart belongs to. But as she races to tell him how she feels, she's hit by a car and wakes up with amnesia. It gets worse. Peyton has no clue who the three men who show up at her hospital bed are, except that they each claim to be her boyfriend. They're certainly worth remembering. A rustic looking contractor, heaven in flannel, a tailored consultant with a smile to die for, and a tattooed chef with a box of homemade chocolates, both delicious. Peyton's friends, Maya and Robbie, have an idea. Date each man again. Recognizing her soulmate should be as easy as one, two, three. So I have no doubt that this is gonna be extremely funny and I'm very excited for it. So cheers to her. She has another thriller coming out next year, which I am super excited about. But in the meantime, I will definitely satisfy my itch with her newest rom-com. Also coming out on the 24th, I wanna read the Britney book, The Woman in Me. I am so curious <laughs> to see what is gonna be in this book. I have no idea how how deep she's gonna go, how transparent she's gonna be, how many curtains she's gonna rip back and tell you about what's going on. But it says, it's a brave and astonishingly moving story about freedom, fame, motherhood, survival, faith, and hope. So I definitely was a little late in age for the Britney craze, but I a thousand percent was in for the Britney craze. I have always been a fan of pop music. So I have not like, hardcore followed every twist and turn but i definitely vividly remember those early years and the justin and just all of that stuff so i'm very curious about that i'm curious if she's going to write about these years under the conservatorship i just am really 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 curious and i'm very excited that she has a book that she's got her freedom that she's going to tell her story so i will be one of the very very many people lining up to get her hands on this book. And I'm wondering if there's gonna be an audiobook and she's gonna read it. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But my eyes are all over that one. The next book I have is another debut and this is Guy's Girl. Has there been another debut? This is a debut. It's called Guy's Girl by Emma Noyes. So this is a romance, but I think there's, it's a much weightier, it's not rom com -y. I think there's a lot of weight and rawness to this one. So it says, a boy who couldn't love and the girl who wouldn't. Ginny Murphy is a total guy's girl. She always found friendships with boys easier to form and keep drama free, as long as they don't fall in love with her and she doesn't fall for them. She and her best friend, she and her best guy friends have stuck to that. But then she meets Adrian Silvis, the only one who's ever made her crave more and Ginny begins to question her own rules. Piece by piece, Ginny and Adrian begin to fall into something intoxicating, something dangerous. Ginny threatens to destroy the belief Adrian's held since witnessing his own mother's heartbreak that love isn't worth the risk. For Ginny, the stakes could be even higher. Letting Adrian get close could mean exposing a secret she's long protected, her disordered eating. So there's a trigger warning for you guys. Ginny isn't looking to be saved by someone, but maybe she and Adrian can help each other if they don't destroy each other first. So it says a powerful story about true love, self-love, and growing up. So this came on my radar because of Berkeley. I do have an arc of this and I'm planning to read it before it comes out. So I will keep you guys posted, but it's just described as very raw, uh, a human journey through trauma, self-exploration and self-love. So definitely high on my list. You guys know I do enjoy a romance, but I do and like, I do and like, I do enjoy and like when there are some weightier themes to the book. So I will be checking this one out for sure. And then we have two books for Halloween. So the first one is Blood Sisters by Vanessa Lilly. I just got a neck alley arc of this, which I'm super excited about. So I have seen many early reviews of this book that are absolutely fantastic. Vanessa Lilly is an author that I have followed her writing journey. She does a lot of writing advice. She does a ton of stuff on her Instagram. She does a lot of author interviews, super transparent about her writing journey. And she did that book for Rich Widows with Kimberly Bell and Lane Fargo and Kate Hollihan, which I totally loved. It was an Audible original or an Amazon original. And there's going to be a sequel to that, but I very much enjoyed it. So this is more of a thriller. And this one is a visceral and compelling mystery about a Cherokee archaeologist 
for the Bureau of Indian Affairs, who's summoned to rural Oklahoma to investigate the disappearance of two women. One of them is her sister. So it says there are secrets in the land. So Sid Walker is our archaeologist, and it says she spends her days in Rhode Island trying to protect the land's indigenous past, even as she's escaping her own. While Sid is dedicated to her job, she's haunted by a night of violence she barely escaped in her Oklahoma hometown 15 years earlier. Though she swore she'd never go back, the past comes calling. The reluctant return home, one of my favorite things. So when a skull is found near the crime scene of her youth, just as her sister Emma Lou vanishes, Sid knows she must return home. She refuses to let her sister's disappearance or the remains go ignored, as so often happens in cases of missing Native women. But not everyone is glad to have Sid home, and she can feel the crosshairs on her. Still, the deeper Sid digs, the more she uncovers about a string of missing Indigenous women cases going back decades. To save her sister, she must expose a darkness in the town that no one wants to face, not even Sid. So I do think that this is even a bit of a darker turn for her. So she has done some psychological thrillers in the past, and I have followed her talking about her journey of writing this book through her Instagram. And I'm really excited about this one. And I'm super grateful to get an arc because again, like 11th hour, I got this and I'm excited about it. So stay tuned because I definitely plan to read this one before it comes out as well. And I'll let you guys know all about it. And then last but not least, I'm super excited because the new Hannah Morrissey book is coming out also on the 31st. This is called When I'm Dead. I have the e-arc of this. I have been saving it for October. So I'm actually in the midst of reading, thanks to you guys, here's a little preview. I am reading Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Cavanaugh. I'm obsessed. This book is so freaking good. It comes out in the US maybe like in March. I'll link it down below. I got it from the UK when I was doing one of my videos and in the comments and I was like, I didn't even know this book existed. It's A Stranger's on a Train, which doesn't even begin to cover what this book is. But anyway, after I finish that, I'm hoping to read When I'm Dead and sneak that in before Midnight is the Darkest Hour shows up in my mailbox. So anyway, stay tuned. But this is the third book in the Black Harbor novel series. So Hannah Morrissey herself will tell you they all function as standalones. You can read them in any order that you want to. I have followed her career from the start, so I have read them in order. But there is kind of in a Dublin murder squad, ton of French kind of a way. The town is the central theme through each of the books just like the Dublin Murder Squad is in the Dublin Murder Squad series. <laughs> so in the first two books, there is one character who plays a big role in book one, plays a smaller role in book two. I don't know if they will appear in book three. The only thing I will tell you is if you read, so Hello Transcriber is the first book. The Widowmaker is the second book. If you read The Widowmaker first, you will get a little bit of intel about a personal relationship from the first book, but you won't get a spoiler for the mystery in the first book. And then in this one, we are following a new set of characters. So this one is set around Halloween weekend, which is also super exciting because it comes out on Halloween. So it says one girl murdered, another missing, and a medical examiner desperate to uncover the truth. So on a bone chilling October night, medical examiner Rowan Winthorpe investigates the death of her daughter's best friend. Hours later, the tragedy hits even closer to home when she makes a devastating discovery. Her daughter, Chloe, is gone, but not without a trace. A morbid mosaic of clues forces Rowan and her husband to question how deeply they really know their daughter. As they work closely to peel back the layers of this case, they begin to unearth disturbing details about Chloe and her secret transgressions, details that threaten to tear them apart. Amidst the noise of navigating her newfound grief and rec reconciling, the sins of her past, an undeniable fact rings true for Rowan. Karma has definitely come to collect. <sighs> I'm so excited for this book. I'm so excited for this book. So again, stay tuned because I'm going to talk all about it. But I am a huge fan of Hannah Morrissey. She writes such chilling and raw and cold as all get out kind of books. Like you feel the chill, you feel the ice, you feel the snow, you feel the rawness. And her books are set in Wisconsin. It is definitely a very dark 
element hanging over all of her books. She is just very gritty in her writing. Her first book, Hello Transcriber, was partially inspired by her time as a police transcriber. And she worked third shift, which was the overnight, and she was exposed to all kind of the dark and messed upness of it all. And I guess she's a woman after my own heart with the dark and messed upness of it all. But I think she writes great characters. Her writing is definitely like evocative and it just pulls you in and her books are just like, I cried in the last book. I just think she does such a beautiful job. She captures such raw energy. I keep saying the word raw, but I think she writes an incredible book and I'm really excited about this one. And again, I'm such a huge fan of Dublin Murder Squad and I love the idea of having the town as the central character. So stay tuned because I'm definitely gonna be reading this one after I finish my Steve Cavanaugh book. So I'll let you guys know all about it. But that is my short list for October. So I definitely feel like I'm forgetting stuff though. I also feel like I did some pretty good research, but let me know what are you most excited for this month? What else is coming out this month that I missed? And I don't know, anything else you guys wanna let me know? So if you haven't already, I'm gonna plug, 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 checked out my Book Travert Bingo video. We are kicking off round three of Book Travert Bingo today, October 1st. So you guys can get in on the action at any point. I did a video that posted the other day. It's also all over my Instagram, so you guys can check it out there. And I hope that you will join me and all of us as we play Book Trooper Bingo, which is basically just intentional mood reading is the way that I look at it. Or if you're just <laughs> looking for something to do, <laughs> that's, that's there for the taking as well. So on that note, I'm gonna call it a night. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope everyone is doing fantastic. Rabbit, rabbit, beginning of a new month. I wish you guys a great start to the month, great reading. And yeah, let me know all the things and we will talk all about them. So I'm gonna go. Thank you guys so much for being here and I will see you in the next one. Bye everybody. Mm -hmm.